Hi guys, welcome back to Settle in Spain. I'm Amanda. I'm joined on this crazy journey by my husband David, our dog Otis and our cats Chewy and Impy. My god, it's been too long. Our apologies to those of you who've been following us for a while. Life, life took over, life does that. In fact, life did it so much I had to write a list of what's been going on. So life and technology got in the way of our video. As many of you know, we're really new to YouTubing. I'm really new to taking videos, uh, to editing, to all of that. And I made some rookie errors. One of those was to do with memory. Videos, it turns out, use up a huge amount of space. And I'm gonna bore you now with a few facts. No, I won't, you don't need boring about that. But suffice to say, the problem I had was the memory on the computer and the memory on a hard drive. They both got filled up completely and utterly. And I couldn't edit anything. I couldn't download any more videos. There was nothing I could do. I have a Mac, a MacBook Pro, and the technical side of things, working out where to store the videos, how to do that and still be able to edit them using iMovie. It took me a while to work out what the best way to do it. It involved financial side of things as well as of buying some more hard drive space and a lot of learning on my part. I have uh, managed to get around it for now, um, invested a little bit in another small hard drive so I'm now using more than one. Uh, eventually there is another solution that just requires more money and eventually when we've got that saved we'll do that. But on a positive note, I have worked out enough to keep us going for a good few months, I hope, with lots more videos for you. So, that was technology. Life. <laughs> well, life always gets in the way of things, doesn't it? And it did in this case. I've been really busy working online, as I normally do, but also doing Christmas fairs, Christmas markets. I make jams and chutneys, which I then sell at the Christmas markets. I also this year did some baked goods as well at one of them, which was fantastic. I used to do these things when we were in Greece, usually at small charity events once a year, maybe twice a year. It was great to go to these events in Spain. It took place um, four different weekends in many different locations. Most of them were being run for charities. Uh, one was a local town that was doing it, so that was fabulous as well. I got to meet some really interesting people. I got to sell my jams and chutneys and candles that I'd made, which was fun. But it also meant that time got taken away from me. I can only do so much. I can only stretch myself in so many different places at once. And YouTube, I'm afraid, didn't happen. But if you follow us on Instagram, you'll have seen the pictures go up on there. And uh, we did put the odd picture out on YouTube as well. Difficult to do that while I was not at the house and on the computer for some reason. Thanks for those of us who were following us on those other channels, including Facebook and Instagram. It was great to see you on there. The candles were a completely new thing. I'd never made those before. There's a couple of really nice gentlemen who live about an hour away from here who have been making candles and soaps for a number of years here in Spain. Um, they were on a TV programme that some of you may have watched. They're called the Dandelions and they have decided to move back to the UK. As a part of that process, they've sold off uh, a certain selection of their equipment and so I've bought their equipment. I've already made and sold some candles, which is fabulous. I've got a lot more experimenting to do to get them the way I really want them. And I've got a lot of learning and experimenting to do for making the soaps. All of this is part of a far longer term plan I have for our farm and part of the warehouse, but that's a long way off and I'll tell you about that another time. I've also of course been doing my permaculture course and I've got a little bit behind with that so one of my New Year's resolutions is to get on top of that one and get that finished ASAP. Do you do New Year's resolutions? Comment below, let me know what yours are this year. One of the events that I attended was down in Ture at a beautiful animal sanctuary called Trex. 
I'm going to do a, a little section somewhere within today's video so you can see a bit more about that sanctuary because I wanted to give them a shout out. I thought what they were doing was amazing and it was such a beautiful location. If you're in the area, pop along or contact them and see if you can help. They've got lots of wonderful volunteers doing amazing things down there. <laughs> Otis, why are you chasing the cat? Because uh, you're a dog, isn't it? Right. Um, <laughs> form. The dog is running behind me and jumping on the wall because the neighbour's working on his land, so he might bark any second now. He doesn't like those guys, and I don't know why. And the cat would like to come and join us, but the dog doesn't want him to. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so life. It's not just my life, it's also David's. His priorities have had to be in other places in recent months. As some of you will already know, we um, are dealing with a long-term issue with his mother's health and that's going to be going on for the foreseeable future and it's something that the, the family are dealing with together. But that is a priority. Also, David started a new job. That's been a huge priority for the last month. Um, his job is extremely technical, he's had to do a lot of learning for that and his, his brain has got to be concentrated on that at the moment. So right now his priorities are his job and his mother and the house has not been a priority. We did manage to spend some time together before Christmas which was fantastic. And there were things we did at the house then, and you'll be able to see that in the next video, not in this one. I don't think I've ever gone into detail about the jobs that him and I do and how we're funding this. I know I've said that he works and he works away and I work online, but I don't think I've ever gone into any particular details. If you're interested in that in any way, do comment down below and we'll do a video on that in the future. So, life, technology, my life, David's life. The animals are okay, they're still with us. That's, I think, all of my list. <laughs> if I've forgotten anything, I apologize, I'll tell you next time. It's a beautiful December 31st here. Can't believe it's New Year's Eve already. And the weather has been stunning lately. We had a very, very cold early December. Um, thankfully, we had some beams out of the roof, which we've made use of, and they were keeping us warm. However, now it's about 17 degrees today. It's sunny, it's lovely, and we've had a beautiful warm Christmas here. Unfortunately, we've also not had enough rain in this region of Spain. I know some regions have had flooding, uh, but here we've just hardly had any at all. The local farmers are all really worried. The last big rains were back in April. We've had a couple of showers since. A bit more up on this mountain where we're renting than down on the area where our actual farmland is. So this is a big concern. Let's cross our fingers, hope for rain in the new year. And if I complain in January or February or April or May that it's raining, remind me of what I said on December 31st. The main part of this video is gonna be part two about the roof. Uh, there's a, quite a bit here on some of the problems that we encountered and there's a roof coming down. Now, I just want to say thank you for everybody who's joined us recently. We've had lots of new subscribers and there's been lots of lovely comments happening down in the comments section and it's lovely to interact with you all there. So thank you and welcome. For those of you who've been with us a while, thanks for sticking with us. Hopefully, now that I've got the technology sorted out yet again, we'll have a more regular program going forward but I'm not gonna make you any promises today, just in case. I hope you've all had a fabulous Christmas, those of you who celebrate Christmas. It's been a lovely quiet one here. David has been away working. I worked, actually I even worked on Christmas morning online, just for a little bit. New Year, again, it's going to be quiet, though I'm going to possibly join some friends for a small party. And David's going to be back in early January and then we're gonna get on and there's lots for us to do over at the house and on the land. Happy New Year and Feliz Año Nuevo to all of you, wherever you are. 
don't forget to subscribe, click those thumbs ups and comment below. And the best thing you can do to help us with this channel is to share it with your friends and on your social media. I hope you enjoy this one. Okay, so good news and bad news. The roofing work is going really, really well. The bad news, we have some beams that are gonna have to be replaced. They're just falling apart. Uh, I'll show you what's happening. Okay, so this is underneath the porch at the front of the house. And this beam here is, oh, actually it doesn't feel that rotten there, but you can see there, it's not good. It's not as strong as it needs to be to hold up all of that roof. I've got something to show you. Mm. This beam. This beam that has a crack along it, I think it might have been the one that was at the front of the house. So this was the section that was hidden and this bit has got the white paint on. And down the middle, there's a hole. It's hollow. Isn't that amazing? Unfortunately, it's not very good for a beam that was holding up the entire front of that carport at the front of the house. Even sounds hollow. It's making good firewood. So this has been created by a bee. There's a certain bee that gets into wood, bores inside, creates a nest and does this. It's not good for your beams. So what's happened here, as it's hollowed out, the pressure on the roof pushing down has created the crack at the bottom 
and eventually it would have completely collapsed. Got to be said, it might be hollow down the middle, but a piece that size is still quite heavy. This then is the room with the lowest ceiling upstairs. I'm surrounded by cobwebs at the moment, which is a little freaky. Clearly, this is where they would have hung the hams to dry them, I think. So we have one beam along the end of there that's also rotten. This is the beam. I'm sure you can see there the holes that have been made and it's just actually turns to dust under your fingers. So this one has to come out and be replaced. It's really low down in here. It's not going to be easy for them to work. Um, going to be interesting to see how they manage to take... Oh, nearly caught myself on that. It's going to be interesting to see how they go about taking these beams out of here. You can probably hear the noise above me. The guys are up there working right now. The third beam is also a very big problem. It's above here in the pigeon loft. Through that little door and up a little steep stairwell that doesn't have much of an entrance at all. In order to get a beam up there, this ceiling is gonna to have to come down. <laughs> There's not much light in this room. And uh, as you can see, again, we have a very low ceiling here. Uh, this ceiling is one that we're planning actually on taking out to raise the roof of this room. We don't need a pigeon loft. <laughs> we're not going to be having pigeons at the house. The roof of this building is huge. I'll work out the square meterage and put it in here somewhere. I think considering how many beams there are, uh, how old the property is and the fact that it's been uninhabited for so long, we're lucky that there's only three that have a problem with some sort of insect damage pleased that we got the property when we did. Uh, further damage, any roof starts collapsing, that's when buildings start collapsing. Looks like we got this one just in time. So this is going to have to come down in order to get a new beam up above. Just to put this into some context for you, the roof you can see them working on at the very top there, that is above where I am stood. That is the top of the pigeon loft. The roofs are on several different levels and that is the highest part there. Right, so we have three sections of roof with beams that need replacing. That very top roof where the pigeon loft is, where the young lad is stood now, there's the one under there, that's with the low ceiling that I was walking through, and then at the front of the porch, come carport, there is the one beam I pointed out and the one next to it that needs to go. So four, four beams in total that need replacing. Next then we needed to look at the options for replacing these beams and source the replacements. There are two different ways this can be done. We could have brand new concrete beams put in there or we can use wooden ones. Those of you who watched the last video will remember that we already planned to have the roof removed at the back to make that back patio courtyard garden bigger. 
The guys have already taken the tiles off there, which they're now using to replace the broken ones on the roof. So next up, it was time to go and get some wooden beams from that back roof. And success, we had retrieved two beams. Uh, we just needed to find two more now. I can't remember whether these two were used at the front of the house or not, but one of them will have been, I'm sure. They had looked to the beams from below, decided which ones were going to be good for which job. But here, Sammy is explaining that one of the ones he was hoping to use is actually rotten and another doesn't look like it's strong enough. So a bit more searching to be done. Uh, next up, Sammy shows us how to repair some traditional old tools that we found that they've made use of to do this job. And so it turned out all you needed to do was wrap some string around the head of that pickaxe. You needed enough of it, which we didn't have initially. We searched around in the room and found some more. But once you got enough string wrapped around that, you could then bash the handle back on and it would stay. I was really impressed by this. I also got a chance to practice my Spanish as we had a few conversations during the process. In fact, the whole process of having Spanish workers in the house was fantastic for my language skills. So there you go, one working pickaxe thing and it's still working today. The rest of the roof soon came down. I was amazed at the amount of dust that this caused. I was doing this handheld. There was nowhere I could put up a tripod in order to do this. It was nowhere safe to do so. I had to move occasionally and step back quite quickly as stuff was falling down. 
this mixture of lime plaster and the reeds is just amazingly strong but amazingly dusty and actually quite dangerous too but everyone was wearing masks at this stage most of the time And there it goes, the last beam coming off that roof and you can just see the sun there. It's getting later in the day. Having finished out back and the other guys had finished doing the tiles on the roof as well, it was time now for the guys to move out front and to take those two beams off the front of the house there, ready for them to start tomorrow to put the new ones in. First they needed obviously to take off the tiles and all the lath and plaster stuff that was on there and uh, then lift those beams out of the way. Before anyone worries about the fire in the skip which has clearly now gone out don't, uh, they were just burning the empty cement bags. You don't want to be filling a skip up with bits of paper after all. I was really surprised how long the beams were at the front here, how far into the wall at the left there they went and also how far into the house that they went. Once we got those beams off we could then see a lot more about the construction of that roof and discover a bit more about what's going on. Okay, so today they've taken off the front beam here and we're clearing, ready to put in the beams that we'd sorted out from the back of the house when we discovered there's another big problem. This time, five of the cross beams are completely rotten. Now as promised, here's a bit about the Trex Andalusia Sanctuary that I spent some time at at their Christmas fair this year. was set up by Jean and Dave Wood mm -hmm. and they rescue animals that would otherwise be put to sleep or have no home so they have a forever home here it's not a rehabilitation until they can be adopted mm -hmm. it's for life so the animals have to be provided for financially health wise etc for life so we were That's here as so different about this place isn't it yes and how many animals are here at the moment you know we have six horses yeah three peacocks chickens herd of goats three rescue puppies two older dog uh -huh. five cats 
five pets. Um, yeah, so we work as volunteers here. Okay. So we help to raise money and we also look after the animals on a daily basis. There's a Sunday club for children here as well to teach the responsibility of caring for animals. Okay, they so also get an opportunity to ride horses, yes. uh, interact with all the animals that we have here. Lovely. So it's a wonderful place to volunteer and it's very worthwhile for us. Thank you. Thanks for that. How long has it been here? We've, we've had the land for nearly 20 years. We've been a registered a charity and sanctuary for about 18 months now. Oh, right. So oh, we are wow. fully registered as yeah. a both as a charity and a sanctuary. Fantastic. So we get no help from the, there's no help from the government. Everything no. is... We're all self-funded here. Yeah. Christmas fair, Easter fairs. We do the 200 Club, which mm -hmm. is a monthly, um, like a lottery. Yeah. So you pay a euro a month and you're allocated a number. And each month we do a draw. And half of the money we raise goes to cha the charity here. And the other half goes to the winners. So we have That's three winners. Idea. The quizzes horse wash days, dog socialisation, so there's lots of activities here that lots we run. We've got a website and also um, a Facebook page, so Brilliant. anyone can look us up and follow us. Thanks, I'll link to those down below. I'd packed up my stall and took a wander around, had a look at some of the wonderful animals that are being looked after at this sanctuary and a couple of the stalls that hadn't quite packed up yet. that's about it for this episode thanks for joining us once again friends on this crazy journey that we're having here in the mountains of andalusia i hope you enjoyed this and i hope you'll join us on the next one when we'll finish off that roof and find out what happens with the porch at the front don't forget to subscribe thumbs up comments and we'll see you on the next one <laughs> Hello. Who are you?